views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Light on Living. I'm Light Coach Lisa, holistic nutritionist and life coach, helping to lighten the load of life's challenges. I have to say I'm selfishly excited for today's show. No matter where I go, whether it's out socially, professionally, or just hanging out with my family, the subject of health and nutrition always comes up. And that's not just because I'm a nutritionist myself, it's because we all eat and we all have some kind of issue at some time that we want solved, especially when it comes to our health or lifestyle or the quality of life that we're living. Like that's a big one. And for me, in my history, it used to be all about weight loss. There's always somebody talking about how to lose this weight and how to cut calories and everything. And then it kind of moved into, well, how do I have more energy? You know, I just, I just got to do so much and, and where do I find this energy? But now what I'm really hearing when I'm out and about are the people they're talking about what are they avoiding like there's they're cutting out foods they're watching out for gmos and farm fish they're cutting out gluten and sugars and all that stuff and and everything that's causing things from allergies to aches and pains sleep disturbances mood swings and hormone imbalances that's a big one so when the opportunity came up to have a holistic pharmacist author of the canadian encyclopedia of natural medicine share this hour with us i couldn't resist so I do have Sherry Turcos with us, and as I said, she's a pharmacist. She's an author, a certified fitness instructor, health enthusiast, and as a leading ex- a health expert, she has delivered hundreds of lectures to medical professionals and to the public. Sherry is frequently interviewed, just like now, on the radio and talk shows throughout North America and abroad on health matters. Actually, she's joining us from Florida right now, and not just one, not just authored one book, but 18 books and booklets. This colorful girl knows her stuff, and I just want to big, do a big, big, big welcome to you, Sherry. Hello, Sherry. Hi there. Thank you so much. It's uh, great to talk with you. <laughs> it really is. This is like my favorite. It's my passionate, passionate subject. It's everything because we don't get away. I mean, every day we've got to eat. But, you know, it's something we do. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And everything we put into our bodies has to be broken down, has to be processed. Hopefully our body is able to take in the nutrients that we are consuming, the good stuff, and um, be able to, um, you know, put it to use to uh, keep us, you know, fighting disease and optimizing our health. And, um, you know, the, the whole issue of food intolerances though, and food allergies is becoming quite common, especially yeah. I would say in the last decade or so. We're just seeing so many people that are um, being challenged with sensitivities and reactions to foods, something that, you know, as a, as a child growing up, it was very rare. And now today, almost everybody knows somebody that has a food allergy or intolerance. Right. It's not, are you allergic any, to anything? It's what are you allergic to? Yeah, what and, can't you have? Exactly. Right. Myself, I have celiac disease and, and I oh. suffered for a long time as a child and a teen before I was diagnosed. And I know what a profound impact that had on my health. I mean, I was oh. really sick for a long time. I went from doctor to doctor. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. I had physical and emotional symptoms that were just dreadful. And it was a sigh of relief when it was finally identified that I couldn't have gluten. I had celiac disease. Now, I wasn't excited about it, I have to say, as a teenager. <laughs> when you hear no no pizza, no burgers, no cookies, no pie. And back in the 80s, we didn't really have a lot of gluten-free options. So it was tough, but yet it was a sigh of relief because I, I finally was able to find out what was making me so sick. And the solution was just to avoid those foods. 
it was a little bit easier said than done. There were some challenges early on, but now today, I mean, being gluten-free is, is quite easy. Now, when you say that, because there was like a snowball of everything right in there, and oh, and you just touched on everything so perfectly. When somebody, when almost everybody has these challenges, it's both. It's physical. It's emotional. You don't know what's going on. You think, what's wrong with me? And that's literally the thing is you're looking for someone to, quote, unquote, diagnose you. Like, what is wrong with me? And I want to specifically ask you about that because you went through it. Um, what, just to share with listeners who maybe they just don't know. They just they feel crummy all the time and, and in pain and all those things. Is is this an allergy specific? Like, are they allergic or are they sensitive? If you could help us know, like, know the difference between an allergy and a sensitivity. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, sometimes these terms are used interchangeably, but they are quite different um, with respect to how, um, what's actually happening in the body. So when you're talking about food allergies, you may have um, known people that are allergic to peanuts or eggs or dairy. Usually it's the protein component of that particular food um, that your body recognizes as foreign. And we don't even understand why. There are some theories in terms of what causes food allergies. But when somebody is allergic, truly allergic to a food, and, and today we also see allergies to strawberries and different fruits and, again, yeah. ingredients and foods. And the immune system is basically overreacting. It's it's reacting inappropriately to something that should otherwise be fine. So it mounts a reaction. That reaction can be mild. You could get a rash or hives or, you know, feel a little dizzy, or it could be severe where you get anaphylactic shock and your throat's closing off and that's a medical emergency and, and you can actually yeah. die. Those people have to carry um, antidotes, EpiPens, and early on some Benadryl can help. Um, but those are, are the extreme reactions, these food allergies. And again, it's the immune system basically reacting um, a little haywire to something that should otherwise not be a problem. And we see a similar type reaction with seasonal allergies, allergies to pollen and things like that, dust and pet dander. Immune system recognizes these um, substances as foreign, mounts a reaction, Seasonal allergies, though, aren't usually life-threatening, whereas food allergies can be. You're ingesting it into your body, goes through your digestive system, and just uh, causes a horrible reaction. So that's that's a, the allergy. Now, an intolerance is different in that with the intolerance, it typically originates in the digestive system. And what's happening here is your body usually is missing an enzyme or something needed to break down a component of a food. And so if you're not breaking the food down, it can cause symptoms. So the most common intolerances that we hear about today are gluten intolerance, lactose intolerance, Again, very common, but one that is less well known, but very, very common is histamine intolerance. And Ooh. this is something that, yeah, histamine intolerance, very common. People often go, though, so long before being diagnosed because they don't really know what's happening and there's not good awareness, I would say, among doctors and healthcare professionals about histamine intolerance, but uh, it is a problem that is typically caused by a deficiency of an enzyme needed to break down histamine, and that enzyme is called diamine oxidase, or DAO. See, now you've just brought up a whole wonderful thing, because I think the, the familiar term there would be, you know, histamine. People are thinking, oh, wait, antihistamine. So an anti would mean, oh, I don't want it. Like, I'm trying to, you know, squish, like, put out the histamine, um, and that's why they're going through these things. But so that's what you're saying, is that there's an issue going on that we're lacking an enzyme that helps us with our own levels of histamine in our body? Yeah, exactly. So histamine is a substance that is naturally produced by our body. It's, um, it's a chemical that um, it's, it's um, produced by your mast cells. That's a type of a white blood cell. And, and it has an important role in the immune system. It's actually the chemical um, that gets released um, when you are exposed to an allergen. And it's the chemical that can make us feel a little bit miserable. It can cause <laughs> runny nose and watery eyes and itching and, you know, tissue swelling, um, but it, it plays an important role in the immune system. And normally, your histamine levels are um, kept in check by this enzyme, diamine oxidase. But if you don't have enough of this enzyme, then you can be in trouble. And, and histamine isn't something that just our body produces with res response to allergens. We, we also ingest histamines through food. 
Mm-hmm. And some of the most common foods that people like that are high in histamines are things like uh, your aged cheeses, meat is um, aged meats like pepperoni, salami, kielbasa, things like that. Uh, dried fruits even have histamines in them, pickled vegetables, so just your pickles and also anything that is pickled. Um, healthy things like yogurt, kefir, um, dried nuts and fruits, um, green tea, chocolate, coffee, and then some of your beverages too, like beer, wine, champagne, uh, these fermented beverages, they're also very high in histamines. Uh, red wine is, is much higher actually than your beer and your white wine and your champagne. Red wine would be probably the worst offender with high amounts of histamine. It's funny because people will say, you know, when they have wine and they get red or flushed or they get a headache or racing heart, they always blame mm. the sulfates or sulfites. That's what I was just thinking. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sulfites. And, you know, I, I've had this discussion with many people and they blame it on the sulfites, but then they also find that there are other foods that they eat that also cause these symptoms and it leaves you a, a bit perplexed. But um, <laughs> it's important to, to check it out because it could be, that it's the histamine, and if you're now, is not the histamine down, coming? Is it in the in the case of let's say wine, when people are really trying to make that decision between a high sulfate or low sulfate or red or white, is it now coming then from the grape because it, the histamine's in that fruit? It's part of the fermentation process. It's mm-hmm. it's created as part of the fermentation process, okay. and um, it, it again is typically higher in your white or your red. Excuse me. So you're better off to have white if you have histamine intolerance. Um, but you don't have to. The other thing people say is, oh, I can't stay away from wine and beer and meats and cheeses and and also pizza too because pizza. Um, bread has histamines in it as well. So basic breads and pizza crusts and things like that would have histamine. And if you have an aged cheese and an aged meat on, on your pizza, that's like a triple whammy. A triple um, whammy. <laughs> you can you know, you know, drinks we, too. We are literally touching like just the tip of the iceberg here. And I know we're going to go to commercial, but the question I'm going to ask when we come back is, that if we want to consume those things um, in small amounts, because I don't want to condone too much of anything, should we or should not, don't answer this, but should we or should we not take an antihistamine? So when we come back, we're going to find that surprise answer. Best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Welcome back to the Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. This actually owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Okay, I know over the commercial break, Sherry, I was in suspense here. Um, we have literally, you've actually just shed some light on not yet another thing to be like, hey, here's yet again another thing we've got to watch out for, but kind of, because now, the, I mean, it feels like this histamine thing is like a, like a mystery guy roaming around and just waiting to like pounce on you and make your levels go all wonky. And 
So when we eat certain things that, you know, are, cre- are causing our histamine levels to, to soar, to rise and, and cause a little bit of um, discomfort, should we suppress it? Should we say, no, 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 you, I need help. I can't handle this. Let me take an, an antihistamine. Or do we let it run its, its course and will our body be able to balance itself out? That's a good question and um, one that makes logical sense, right? My histamine levels are high. I'm going to take an antihistamine, and that can be helpful if you have allergies, uh, taking an antihistamine. I mean, people also take them when they have cold symptoms, although interestingly, the antihistamines have never really been shown to be that effective for treating cold symptoms. They help a little bit, especially the old generation antihistamines like Benadryl, but not so much with the newer generation. Mm. And Yes, helpful for seasonal allergies. Not so helpful, though, if you have a histamine intolerance. And the reason for that is that if you have a histamine intolerance, most people that have that, it's due to a deficiency of the enzyme DAO. In fact, 70%, 70% of people that have a histamine intolerance, it's because they have a deficiency of the enzyme. Now, um, there's a lot of things I'll talk about in a second, what can cause a DAO deficiency, because I think this will resonate with a lot of your listeners, um, maybe answer some questions. But it would seem like, okay, take an antihistamine and that will help. In the short term, it does help. However, in the long term, it is counterproductive because the antihistamine means can lower your DAO levels. So it's it's like a short-term fix, but over time, it actually is not a good thing because it'll affect your body's own production of this enzyme DAO. It'll lower your DAO levels. So you don't want to take antihistamines. What you want to do is reduce your histamine intake and take a DAO enzyme before you eat Uh those foods. Um, But uh, yeah, to to give um, people an idea in terms of, you know, what what symptoms would you have if you have a histamine intolerance? Because this is something, you know, it's interesting because the symptoms can mimic other conditions like even lactose. Yeah, (laughs) sneaky, like lactose intolerance, even celiac disease. They all share some common symptoms, which is, abdominal cramping, upset stomach, um, you can have gas and bloating or diarrhea, but also with histamine intolerance, people will notice that they get racing heart. I was going to ask that. Yes. Oh, yeah, my so goodness. Palpitations. You have a couple glasses of wine or even a glass of wine, your heart starts to race. Maybe you feel dizzy, headaches, flushing, your face turns red. Um, you could have congestion, like your sinuses get congested and um, you have, because yeah. you have tissue swelling, your eyes maybe get watery. These are all symptoms of histamine intolerance. And again, keeping in mind that 70% of people that have histamine intolerance, they have a deficiency of the enzyme needed to break down histamine. So who are we talking about? Who's at risk here? Well, we're talking about anybody that has gastrointestinal disorders, such as what I have, celiac disease. If you have celiac, if you have Crohn's, colitis, irritable bowel, leaky gut syndrome, dysbiosis, which means that you have an upset in the normal um, functioning and the normal flora in your gastrointestinal tract, that's a risk factor for having a deficiency of DAO. Because DAO, it's primarily produced in the um, enterocytes, and those are, are cells in the digestive system. And it's produced to a smaller extent in the kidney and a few other places. But people that have gastrointestinal diseases, they're at a much greater risk of having a deficiency of DAO. Also, as we get older, unfortunately, one of the things that happens with aging, we don't produce as much DAO. So if you're in your teens and 20s and you think, oh, you know, no problem, I can drink the beer, the wine, eat the pizza, not a problem. Why now in my 30s or 40s or 50s, what's happening? Why am I not able to um, break these foods down or what, why am I getting symptoms when I eat these foods? It could be because you're not producing as much DAO. That happens with aging and there are environmental factors as well. Um, people that are really stressed out, um, stress is known uh-huh. to, of course, you know, impact so many aspects of your health. And one is that it affects your digestion and it does affect your DAO status. Um, And if you have a deficiency of certain vitamins, like vitamins B6, vitamin C, uh, copper, that can also put you at risk of a DAO deficiency. Okay, interesting that you mentioned, okay, so you, the bees, I always think, you know, neurological, this is my stress, this is my, you know, I, I'm thinking green, green leafy vegetables and stuff, I'm thinking vitamin C, I'm thinking my immune system, um, and then you put in copper there, and I know that taking certain prescriptions, and 
perfect person to talk to is a pharmacist you here. Um, some of the medications that we take actually can interfere or increase our copper as well birth control. It can be a huge um, interference with our stuff. Our prescriptions, because there's a lot of prescriptions that people are taking a day, are they are those prescriptions interfering with our DAO? Yeah, most of um, the prescription drugs that um, we have to be careful with in people that have histamine intolerance are drugs that either um, they block DAO or they reduce your DAO levels or they affect histamine. Um, so some of the most problematic drugs in this category, the one that, that really stands out because I know a lot of people take these drugs are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory <gasps> drugs. Oh, no. Yeah, So those are the ones you can buy over the counter. Think about Motrin, yes. um, Advil, Aleve, Aspirin even. <gasps> these are drugs that can uh, reduce your DAO. Same, I mentioned the antihistamines. Think about Benadryl, even Allegra, Zyrtec, things like that. Um, oh, also the histamine blocking digestive drugs. So when we say antihistamines, a lot of people think Benadryl, cold yeah. and allergy products, but there's also antihistamine ingredients in the drugs that people take <gasps> to treat heartburn. So if you have oh acid my reflux, yeah, acid reflux, heartburn, um, uh, you know, you, you feel, you know, that gastritis, the drugs that we use, that like things like Tagamet or Pepsid or Zantac, which is ranitidine, they contain histamine 2 blockers. It's just a different type of uh, histamine blocker, but they also have that same effect to lower your DAO levels. So you have to be careful um, with those drugs. Um, not saying you should go off all of these things, but if you're taking right. them, just talk to your pharmacist, talk to your doctor. Maybe we can recommend an alternative. Um, especially if you're taking um, and you're looking this up and you're researching it and you're finding out, wow, like even blood pressure drugs and some immune modulating drugs, they can also affect like uh, Humira and Enbrel and Plaquenil, things that are used for rheumatoid arthritis. They can also affect your oh immune levels. But sometimes, you know, people have to weigh the benefits versus the risks. If they're, yes. you know, crippled by arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, they need these medications, they're having problems with histamine intolerance, Definitely don't just stop taking the drug, but maybe you could take a, hist um, a DAO supplement. Yes, before. I was going to ask that was my next one. So, like, we, yeah, oh, my goodness. There's like this. I love the both sides of the, of the scale here. We've got some things that we want to just have a look at. Do our research and talk to someone who's knowledgeable in this to find out what is, you know, affecting it and reducing it. But we can um, increase this ourselves. We can supplement it or, or support it. Yeah, in the same way that people that have lactose intolerance, they take a lactase supplement. Uh -huh. So, I mean, long ago, you know, before we had some of these enzyme supplements, if you had lactose intolerance, if you, first of all, it'd be tricky, did you identify what's causing you gas, bloating, diarrhea? And if you found out, okay, it's when I eat milk, yogurt, cheese, then people would just have to avoid those foods. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, right? If you like to have cheese and you enjoy, you know, smoking yeah. your cereal or, or yogurt, it's tough to avoid them. Um, thankfully, there's enzymes you can take now before you eat those foods. And same with the um, DAO. If you're deficient in DAO, you can take a DAO enzyme before you eat those foods. And you don't have to take it all day, every day. It's something you just take about 15, 20 minutes before you have a high histamine food. So if you're going out for a couple glasses of wine and some cheese, you take it right before. If you're going out for pizza and beer, again, you just take it before. And it's um, it's been available in North America, I would say, for a few years now. But when you look, if you're Googling and you're reading about DAO enzymes or supplements for histamine intolerance, the key thing you have to look for is that the supplement actually contains the mm -hmm. enzyme diamine oxidase, because I've seen products advertised on the internet um, that they can help with histamine intolerance or DAO, and sometimes they'll contain antihistamine ingredients like quercetin or you know, yes. vitamin C or B6, and you know they may help support you, but you actually need that enzyme, so you have to read the fact <sighs> panel, the, the uh, supplement fact panel, make sure it says diamine oxidase, and it should give you an amount, okay. and um, the one that, one that I know that I take myself because I'm also affected by histamine intolerance is called Umbrellix. That's U-M-B-R-E-L-L-U-X, Umbrellix. 
Okay. And I know that one is good because it's medical grade, mm-hmm. um, top quality. You know, you can and you can order it online, so that's that's an easy one to find. But uh, and we take it, it twenty out, minutes before. Like you want to take yeah. it, let it get in there and do its thing. Okay. Yeah, and it's not absorbed into your bloodstream. That's the other thing. People oh. ask me, you know, what about if I'm taking blood pressure pills or I have, you know, um, diabetes or whatever the case may be? Um, this is an enzyme that just acts locally in your digestive system, so it's not absorbed into your bloodstream. Uh, it doesn't affect, you know, your heart, your kidneys, liver, things like that. It just works locally, and you only take it before you eat those foods. So you don't have to take it three times a day, all the day, uh, every right. day. Only when you need it. Same with like a lactase supplement. If you're lactose intolerant, you take that lactase before you have your milk or dairy products. With the DAO enzyme, you just take it before you have a histamine-containing uh, meal, and uh, there you go. And, and there's a, a good website um, I, I'll, I'll direct your listeners to um, if they're interested in info on this. I found this really helpful. It's called daodeficiency.org. If you go to daodeficiency.org, great website. It has a self-evaluation tool. Ooh. And if you're wondering, like, oh, is this me? Um, how do I know? Well, testing, the challenge is testing for DAO deficiency is is not reliable because oh, blood levels God. don't reflect what's happening. Same with histamine levels. So you're, you're better off either to try an elimination diet, so t- staying away from all those foods, then reintroducing them and seeing if that affects you, or do a supplement trial, take the enzymes before you eat those foods and see if that helps to improve how you feel when you're eating them. You know, that is extreme. Thank you so much, Sherry, because um, some I love when people are recognizing their symptoms and they're tracking them and like what you said. Now, um, when you mentioned, you know, this is like a supplement we're taking specifically prior to, and um, I have a question. We're going to get to answer before the commercial, and then when we come back, we'll have so much more. But um, is, if you took, if one was taking a digestive enzyme, you know, already supporting everything else, does that contain the DAO or generally, or is this a, like, this is definitely a separate This is separate. Um, Digestive enzymes, um, I have not seen any that combine the diamine oxidase along with them. Like you'll see lactase and pepsase and uh, pepsin and things like that, Um, different enzymes, digestive combinations, but you won't typically see, I've never seen it myself, diamine oxidase. And somebody who's actually taking a digestive enzyme um, and perhaps they don't, would somebody who's taking that might not need that particular digestive enzyme once they start? Because if it's really all sitting on the shoulders of histamine, is that possible, first of all? Could it all be sitting on the shoulders of histamine? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's tricky. I, I would say it's good for somebody to work with um, a person like yourself who's a, a nutritionist or a dietitian to get some advice um, so that they're not stabbing in the dark and maybe to get mm-hmm. some guidance in terms of dietary changes and, you know, how to go about what supplements are necessary. Um, sometimes when you're trying something new, like if you're listening and you're thinking, wow, I wonder if I have a histamine intolerance, it makes sense to do a trial with the enzymes to see if it helps you um, it, because it, it's very specific for that that uh, histamine. It doesn't, the diamine oxidase when you take it, again, it, it works just in the gut. It's not going to affect the breakdown or absorption of other foods or food ingredients. It just works on histamine. Okay, and with that, we are going to go to break and when we come back, I'm going to explore the digestive system a little further so we have that better understanding. of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart 
heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. We're back. We are here with Sherry Torkis on Light on Living. I, my mind really is so, I, Sherry, I'm literally wanting to jump up and down because I'm thinking of so many of my clients, my friends, myself, um, just about what you're sharing with us. I mean, you've given us everything from here's a possibility of what could be really affecting someone's quality of life. Then you've told us, um, you know, how it's working and what's going on. And then you've given us a fabulous tool, the DAO deficiency.org, where there is that self evaluation tool we can go to. You've also even let us know about um, a possible supplement, um, Umbrella. No, Umbrella. So, so, like I said, Umbrellax, right? yeah. Umbrellax, yeah, who, you know, definitely has the, the diamine oxidase. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about this, and I'm, a couple questions, two, two big ones. And I, I, I always try to stress people that there is a solution, and our bodies are meant to repair. Our bodies are not meant to be in a painful, hurtful, destructive um, way. We, we have this power, and we can, we can repair and solve. Now, two things I want to ask. Has the histamine levels increased in our food, and is that why we're noticing it maybe more and more? And second part of that, how long is it? Can we can we repair our our guts, let's say, or whatever it is that we need to be spitting out this enzyme, the DAO that we require? So that's a two question there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. So the first question: Has the histamine level in our in our foods increased? I would say yes. Um, because we are consuming more processed, prepared foods, um, especially if you look at our ancestral diet. You know, maybe, yes, they were drinking wine hundreds of years ago, um, but probably not as much beer and champagne and wine and all the things that we consume today. And when you look at the types of processed meats that people eat, I mean, pepperoni, I don't know how long pepperoni's been around, but I would <laughs> guess maybe a hundred years. I don't even know if it's been around that long. Um, so we're getting a lot of the chemicals and things from our foods, the age, the processed meats. Certainly our lifestyles today are different. Um, we're eating also a lot more bread. Bread is high in histamine. Oh, um, yeah. We're under a lot of stress. And just if you look at digestive diseases alone, how common? I'm sure you see a lot of patients in your practice that have digestive problems. I know I would say two of the most common things that I advise people with in the pharmacy are pain and digestive problems. Mm-hmm. You've got so it. So common. Yeah. I mean, chronic constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating. Uh, people take a lot of antibiotics today and unfortunately sometimes they're unnecessary. And when you take antibiotics, they can upset your normal flora that can wreak havoc on so many aspects of digestion, digestion because we need that the good bacteria in there to help us break down and assimilate nutrients. Um, and if you have damage to your intestinal mucosa, that can affect your DAO levels. So I guess that gets into kind of your next question of, you know, can we, was yeah. it, if we can boost up our DAO levels naturally or well, if, if things are improved, can that improve? Can we time? truly, re- yeah, can we truly repair this? And, and I say that because um, I, uh, I was just speaking with even a patient yesterday and they said, um, like they just suffered so for so long with uh, IBS and just a lot of bowels and their and heartburn. So that's why I kind of went ah when you mm-hmm. said heartburn. They're constantly taking and they have no choice at this time. So we're talking about digestive enzymes and boosting that and um, mm-hmm. and then I and I really want to give them hope and said you know you can re- you in one year your entire body all the cells are rebuilt. So when we're talking about well, as long as we're not continuing to harm it and that we are mm-hmm. focusing on that repair. So with the mucosal lining, I mean. I mean, that's full of 
like live little bacteria guys, they're busy doing the stuff they need to be doing all the time. So how soon, like, I know this is a hard question, but when can somebody expect to, to, they could, they, that they can give love and, and proper nutrients to, to their digestive system? And yeah, so I, I, it does take time to rebuild and restore, replenish your your um, your gut health. And I don't know if there's any studies that have specifically looked mm-hmm. at the fact. So say somebody has a DAO deficiency and it's due to having Crohn's colitis, irritable bowel, celiac or dysbiosis or taking antibiotics. And then, you know, if we heal the, the gut, can the gut then produce the, the necessary DAO? I think it's possible that it can be improved over time. Um, I think it, you know, for, for a whole lot of reasons, it's important to optimize gut health because, you know, it's the center of our, our health yeah. universe. And if the gut, if your gut is not healthy, it, it throws off so many things that can have, cause headaches and um, make you uncomfortable, with quality of life, nutrient absorption, so many things, even immune system health impacted by not having good gut health. So getting gut health back on track, literally important. So um, eating the, the cleanest foods you can, staying away from processed prepared foods, probiotics are beneficial, reducing stress, exercise, lots of pure clean water, all those things are, are very beneficial. And um, in terms of the supplemental strategy, I um, I do recommend um, probiotics to a lot of my patients. I think they can help with oh so many factors of health. And if you have a histamine intolerance, I would strongly encourage someone to try the DAO enzyme because it can, um, you know, make a big difference. Um, it, you know, if it's a difference of feeling unwell after you eat. You know, people sometimes experience, they, they get used to feeling uncomfortable after they eat. They don't even realize that it's not normal to have gas, bloating, pain, diarrhea, headaches, rash, flushing, racing heart. That becomes almost a norm. Um, so you don't want to accept that. You want to, you know, work on, on repairing and rebuilding uh, your health so that you can enjoy a better quality of life. Yes, yes. And oh, it's so it's actually sad when you do see somebody, it's just like, oh, that's just how it is. And I mean, I grew up with a mom who was very ill and, and literally I'm, right now I'm wondering, oh my goodness, could that have been, you know, some of her issues and she'd have to take the antihistamines, which led into this and led into that. Um, when I'm thinking about, I just really want to take this opportunity because you are a pharmacist and a holistic pharmacist at that. Um, we, as you just said, we can become comfortable or just the norm with these symptoms. I really see how how a lot of people are just accepting taking over-the-counter medication as a, like a life, like it's just a food, like as if it's a supplement. I, I do want to ask you if you could highlight the mm-hmm. myths and the dangers of your, like when I think about over-the-counter, I think a lot of people use nose spray. They take Talon, they take Advil, they take um, cold mm-hmm. medications, and they're so available. And there's even like Tylenol ones, I believe it is, like, like mm-hmm. the ones that are a bit stronger. You can just go get them. And is that, should we have that? I mean, I know, I know everybody wants to be able to treat themselves the way they feel they should, but are we maybe not giving enough, are we not recognizing the power that these things have on our bodies? Are they safe? I think we need to be more cautious. And, you know, you're hearing this from the pharmacist. These things that you can buy over the counter aren't, that doesn't mean that they're safe just because you can buy them without a prescription. And I've actually done lectures on this topic, and it's something I feel very passionately about. Um, don't just grab something off the shelf and take it, you know, if you got a headache or an ache and pain without reading the fine print that's on the package because there can be interactions with prescription medications. There can be interactions with other health conditions. So if you have serious health conditions, diabetes, heart disease, glaucoma, prostate disease, those are just a couple that come off to my mind, Um, taking some over-the-counter drugs can deteriorate your health. Um, Even things that people just assume as, you know, oh, it's been around forever, it's safe like Tylenol and aspirin. You know, they are safe when used appropriately, but they do have real side effects. If we look at aspirin, the risk of gastric bleeding, very high. Ringing in the ears is another problem. Tylenol, acetaminophen um, is a chemical name. And if you take too much of that, it can actually cause acute liver failure. 
And if you take Tylenol and combine it with alcohol, even just a couple Tylenols a day combined with alcohol can be very hard on the liver. And if you combine that, say you're taking uh, medications for your cholesterol, which are hard on the liver, and you take Tylenol and you have a drink or two, not a good mm. scenario. So um, you mentioned decongestant nasal sprays. Um, again, people grab those. They don't always read the fine print, and I'm, I realize because now that I'm close to 50, <laughs> I need I need reading glasses to see that fine print. It's so tiny, and but you have to yeah. take you know time, get reading glasses out if you need them, and look what's on that package because you'd be surprised that even the decongestant nasal sprays, they can cause racing heart insomnia and they can actually worsen congestion when they're used for longer than three days. So a lot of problems with some of these over-the-counter drugs and um, the sleeping aids, the people, the prescription sleeping aids for sure, very dangerous, should be used only when absolutely necessary. I do want to go, I'm going to wait, save sleeping until after the last commercial break because that's a a big one I definitely want to talk, um, touch on. But one question um, before, because you're mentioning about eyes and you just mentioned about your eyesight. So here's something, this is a personal thing for me. Um, I used to, so before going on camera and doing shows and everything, I would only use like Visine just to kind of brighten up the look, you know, like more of a cosmetic type thing. And yeah. then I noticed, wow, my eyes really feel like it, they hurt. And so I stopped it. And then I, I moved over to the, not the, the red eye, but the, just the murine, like a nice a saline solution kind of thing. And then I, I thought, wow, I, did I even read what's in here? Like I, I take so much care into what I'm consuming and eating. And you know, even the makeup I use, I read to make sure it's, you know, this and that. But um eye drops. I mean, a lot of us are on computers and phones and we're looking and driving and focusing. Are how, What are the effects of eye drops? Is it in our actual eyes? Yeah, for sure. That that can be problematic. Um, Visine, as you mentioned, um, I, I've seen people too that, that um, just actually a couple of weeks ago, somebody was at, uh, looking for something, a uh, customer in, in the uh, eye aisle and um, he was saying, oh, I use this every day. And I'm like, oh no, don't use that every day. It can be really dangerous. It can cause dry eyes and irritation um, and can affect your eye pressure even um, in some cases. Mm. So if you have dry eyes, you're best to use just a lubricating eye drop. And there are a lot of different um, ones to choose from and also omega-3 fatty acids. There's been some interesting research mm. on the benefits of omega-3s for dry eyes. Now you mean consuming that, right? As a capsule, yeah, not in your eye. Okay, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> consuming, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, consume omega-3s, boost in your diet or supplements probably would be the best bet to get enough of them. So that can be very helpful um, for dry eyes. Um, eye fatigue is a big issue because more and more people today, their jobs involve staring at computer screens and we don't always think to blink and if you're not blinking enough you're not lubricating your eyes enough um, that can be um, difficult so you want to do that more often give a take a rest from your your screen time and um, there's another supplement that's really helpful too um, which is astaxanthin astaxanthin you can look up asta fx so if you go to a s t a asta fx like frank and then mm-hmm. X is an X-ray. AstaFX is a, a research type of astaxanthin that has been shown to reduce eye fatigue and to improve uh, visual response and acuity. Mm-hmm. And so and that's something I take myself as well and I, I do um, find very beneficial. You know, thank you so much for that, like as a personal, but for everybody. And we are going to go to commercial, but when we're back, um, let's talk about sleep because that's a big one for everybody. Okay, when we come back. Sure. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. 
I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing this time with us. We are here with Sherry Torkis, uh, pharmacist, author, just absolutely, I'm just going to call you a colorful pleasure because I just love all the areas of, of complete health that, that you're sharing with us about. And I love talking about food, and I love that you're able to really bring out what's that food doing because it's feeding us, it's not feeding us, it's hurting us, it's harming us, and all these like little surprise things. And I know that it's going to seem like, okay, wait, why are we going to talk about sleep? But I would love for you just to share the role of, I think a lot of people put it on the back burner and they, they know they need it and, and they know that they want it when they want it. But some people say, oh, we'll sleep when we're dead. Actually, it's one of my most hated statements, by the way. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and I just would like, um, if you could share with us about sleep and the biggest thing, because so many people are taking sleeping pills, it's the first thing they're rushing to. So I would love to hear your, your thoughts and, and help on that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sleep is one of the most vital needs our body has. And we always, yes, we put it on the back burner. And I've been guilty of this myself. When you're busy, what, what is the first thing that gets sacrificed? It's your sleep. We, we pack more into our days, leaving less time for sleep. And I, I think that people just don't understand the value of sleep. And we know that, yes, if you don't get enough sleep, you're tired the next day. Um, but I think people would be surprised to find out that um, that fatigue can translate into impaired memory, um, a reduced ability to respond, so a slower reaction time, which is not good for your, when you're driving or operating machinery, things like that. Um, your, 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 again, your memory, your mental capabilities, also even your ability to deal with stress is diminished when you are sleep deprived. And then there are the effects on the immune system. There are effects on your hormone levels. We know that sleep deprivation has been linked to obesity and weight gain, that not getting enough sleep at night affects hormones and chemicals in your body that can cause you to have a reduced metabolism, greater cravings and hunger and appetite. So that's definitely not good. And um, gosh, I mean, if we look at the risks of chronic disease, heart disease, cancer, we know that sleep deprivation, especially when you're getting less than six hours, that seems to be kind of the, the minimum number you need to shoot for. If you're not getting six hours of sleep at night, that seems to up your chances of having certain types of cancer and heart disease. So there's a whole lot of reasons why sleep needs to be prioritized. We need to set aside enough time for sleep. If you're having difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or awakening, get it, get investigated. Find out what's causing your trouble. It could be a side effect of a medication you're taking. It could be yeah. something in your diet. I mean, goodness, histamine intolerance, that can cause racing heart and um, you're not feeling well. That could affect your sleep. Um, I was having, just thinking when you said that, I was like, oh, now we, maybe we're taking something. Maybe we're taking something for heartburn just before we're going to bed. And yet that's going to keep us up. Um, with um, sleep apnea, so many people are going, like what you said, do the investigative work, and people are going to the sleep clinics, and then they get this result back. Okay, you've woken up 27 times in the night or 80 times or two times, and now they're saying, okay, now you have sleep apnea. Here's the machine. Um, I just, it, This is so common now. This is like almost unheard of when I was growing up, and now it's like almost everybody's got sleep apnea. 
Yeah, it, it is becoming very common. And, um, you know, the, the, the machines are necessary for some, but the more research I've done on this topic, the more I've, I've um, learned about some of the other important things um, that can affect um, sleep and lead to sleep apnea. I mean, obesity is a big issue. Um, people that are carrying extra weight, that uh, can cause the snoring and, and um, the problems with, with getting that peaceful, restful sleep at night. That should be looked at. Even your, your um, ability to breathe through your, your nasal passages versus your mouth. Um, there's been some interesting research on this field of dentistry, um, which is airway-centric breathing and looking at disordered breathing where people are breathing through their mouth. They're snoring at night. They stop breathing at night. And in some cases, dentists can help that by um, improving uh, your, your ability to oxygenate using your, your nostrils versus your mouth. So sometimes it involves spacers or having appliances in your mouth to adjust your bite because if there's a problem with your bite and uh, if you have an overbite in particular, kids even with thumb sucking and things like that, that can affect their bite. So there's a lot of things that really should be looked at before we just jump to some of the quick fixes and, and especially when it comes to prescription sleep aids. Uh, gosh, there's so many side effects with those drugs and I see patients that um, once they start taking them, they don't want to go off them and they can't. If they go stop taking them, then they, they you know feel anxious and they don't sleep for days. They have to wean off of them. But these drugs have been associated with an increased risk of death due to all causes. And there's a lot of science out there pointing to the dangers of relying on prescription sleep aids. So I think they should only be used short-term special cases where people aren't able to improve sleep with other strategies. And there's lots of natural things we can do, even from a supplemental perspective, too, that can help with sleep. Okay. Now, with um, the when you if they are taking a sleep pre- prescription like a pill, sleeping pill, um, are they even getting the quality of sleep that they should be getting naturally to do those things? Like this is where we we do metabolize. This is where we get to lose weight. I mean, sleep is fabulous. If you want to lose weight, the sleeping is the best place for it. It allows your body to do this. So, are if someone is even taking a sleeping pill, are they getting to the level of proper of proper sleep to achieve anything good? Yeah, and that's that's that is somewhat debatable. The um the quality of sleep, um, and the fact that your your normal sleep patterns can be you know disrupted or not adequate with some of those short term fixes. Now, I always encourage people before you try to take prescription sleep aids, you know, try to do some of the other things, the, you know, stress management, the relaxation t- techniques, the deep breathing, making your sleep environment better by, you know, making your room dark and staying away from electronics and stimuli like television and things that are upsetting before bedtime, doing relaxing things, supplements, you know, magnesium is a big one. I find a lot of people are deficient in magnesium and simply taking a good magnesium supplement before bed can help improve um, muscle relaxation, mind relaxation, other things like L-theanine can be helpful, um, ashwagandha, which is an herb I sometimes use as well, melatonin for certain people. And there are a lot of different things that I think should be tried first before we go to prescription sleep aids. You've given us so many options there. And the final thing on, on sleep before we wrap up is um, if someone says, you know what, yes, I think I'm, I'm just wound up at the end of the night. I'm going to do a nice meditation, but I don't know how, so I'm going to grab my device and I'm going to put on my my meditation or the visualization or just the music. Is that device itself, though, keeping us up, even though that's the tool we're using? Yeah, I think that's different than um, using your device for, say, Facebook or Twitter <laughs> or watching <laughs> watching news or whatever. It's, it's, you're much better off to um, use your device for either relaxation music. I mean, my son, he's seven now, and we put um, the iPad on and we put this lullaby music on. He's done oh. that since he was an infant, and it gets him to sleep right away. So relaxation music, meditation, guided meditation, those things are different very helpful. But it's the TV, it's that looking at those rapidly changing images and the colors on the mm-hmm. screen that keep our brain excited and our mind thinking about all the crazy things that are going on in the world. So those are the things that we should try to minimize and limit right before we go to bed. And also keeping your electronics out of your room so you're not tempted if you can't fall yeah. asleep to jump up, grab it and check your social media feed and see what's going on. <laughs> right, right. Well, I feel like, Sherry, Every single thing you've, every word that has come out of your mouth has been 
so helpful. Like I can just think of, I don't even know, 20 people right now that I want to rush out and share these things with. And I just know that there's a listener out there that this could very well have changed their quality of life. And I want to send out that big thank you. But I also want to say, how do people, are they best to read your books? Are they best to get in touch with you? Watch your site? How can they get in touch with you or just have you help them in their own way? Yes. Yeah, so you can check out my website. It's sherrytorkus.com. It's S-H-E-R-R-Y-T-O-R-K-O-S. Go to sherrytorkus.com. I've got a lot of information um, on the topic we discussed today on my blog page, so you can read about that. That other website I gave out earlier, if you're thinking you may have a histamine intolerance DAO deficiency, go to daodeficiency.org to read about that. Um, I don't do um, consulting from distance only person face-to-face, um, but I would encourage people to meet with their healthcare provider, their dietitian, nutritionist, naturopath, medical doctor, and uh, I always try to look at what is going on at the root problem versus band-aid approaches and the quick fixes. Well, Sherry, everything I said, like I said, have you been so helpful. And I know that you are a busy girl, literally sharing this information. You've got an interview right now. So I am going to say goodbye to you as I stay on the line with the listeners, but just a huge thank you for sharing this time with all of us. Oh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking with you and uh, having the opportunity to share this information with your listeners. So thank you again. Oh, thank you. And have a great next show. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Bye, Sherry. Bye. Bye. And now, everyone, I am just so glad that you've shared this entire hour. I mean, I'm very excited about this. This is what I, I love imagining everything that I choose in my life, if it's, you know, food, a supplement, an activity, um, whether it's meditation or the, I mean, I am, I, I, sleep is number one to me. I, I'm a, I'm an eight and a half. I'll take nine if I can get it. And I put that at, uh, at the front of, of my needs. And I, I let everybody know because I'm a bear when I'm tired. I'm not very happy at all. I'm like a, I'm like a happy, grumpy person. And so nobody wants to be around me. So always look at what's going on in your life. Is it your your diet that maybe needs that specific attention? Is it the lifestyle? Is it the relationships, the people that you have in your life? Is it, you know, how much you're working or how much you're, all these things. I want you to really have a good look at that and say, you know what? I need some help. Who is it that I need help from? What area it is? And just really honor that there's something that you could improve on, that you could be better and just really have a fantastic, fabulous, loving, compassionate and helpful life. So I hope that all of you have enjoyed this uh, show as much as I have. And we'll see you next week on Light on Living, Monday at noon. Bye. Bye, everyone.